Well, you guys, there's been a whole lot going here with my telescope, and I really want to talk about all the adjustments that I've been making mechanically to the telescope, but I think that video needs to be saved for a later video. In today's video, though, I want to talk about how I'm saving files so I can capture multiple targets in a single night, as well as take a single target over multiple nights, or maybe even multiple targets over multiple nights. Another fantastic thing that this file system will take care of is multiple telescopes and multiple cameras. And that will allow me to work best with my Hyperstar with single filters and save all my files for easy processing today, tomorrow, or 10 years in the future. So if you wanna learn how to do that as well, stick with this video and I'll show you exactly how I do that. All right, so we're gonna hop straight into things. So if you go to options and then you click imaging, that will bring you up to this here. And if you're using a newer version of Nina, at least Nina 2.3, I believe, then you'll have the ability to split out all your different file patterns. And this system right here is what's going to allow us to do multi-target nights and multi-night targets, both simultaneously within one system. So first let's go over exactly how it saves things. First, you'll notice that it saves things by the telescope name. So if you're using different telescopes or different telescope configurations, like for my Hyperstar, I might, this might say Edge HD F2. If, but if I'm shooting in F7 or F10, it might say F7 or F10 right here. And then it splits out by camera. So if I'm shooting with my 294 MC or my 294 MM, it will then split those out. And then inside those folders, you're going to have your imaging libraries for each camera that pertains to each telescope. So inside there at the very top of each folder, it's going to say darks, bias, and flats because we have an exclamation point that precedes everything. And then continuing down, our dark flats also go into our flats folders because those want to be split up between each night. But then our darks and our biases, since these ones are very simple and we're only going to do these every few months, then we want these to be at the top of their own section and split out into their own things, no problem. So this system that we've got here allows us to take all the important information that you'd want to know, the telescope you're using, the camera you're using, the target you're shooting from, and the date that it splits it out. And then inside that, you're going to have all of the really important information that you want to keep with each file. So let's look at our pattern preview right now that we have for our lights. First, it gives us our target name, and then it gives us our filter, then the frame number, gives us our temperature, our gain, our offset, our binning, and then finally a date. These are called keywords, and this allows us to sort things specially in weighted batch pre-processing. So, the real advantage of this is that because we have right here where it says 2016-0101, that is also going to exist down here in our dark flats, and our darks, and our flats, and our bias. All of these have the exact same date that is being saved properly. And what this means is this keyword is going to get passed along. And so when we're using weighted batch pre-processing, we can use keywords to sort our data properly. And this will allow us to calibrate our flats, darks, biases, dark flats, all with our light frames and match things up exactly the way we want to. This system that we've created here also creates a logical file tree for when we're trying to save all of our pictures. Let's go through a quick example of that now. Here I am in my observatory's computer and we're gonna open up our AstroTemp database. Inside here, we have our Edge HD. And then inside that, we have our 294 MM Pro. Now inside here, I normally am cleaning this out regularly, so that's why it's pretty empty. You don't see any flats, darks, biases, or anything like that in here right now. Normally you'd see that in separate folders, but those get automatically cleared out by some certain plugins that I'm using. But let's open up panel one and see exactly what we have here. First, we have our date that is being used, and inside that we have our lights, and currently we only shot with one filter because we're shooting our Hyperstar. And inside that we have our 60 seconds. And it gives us our acquisition details in CSV, 
our image metadata in CSV, and it also gives us our weather data in CSV. These are important pieces of metadata that we will be able to use to look at some of the stuff. It basically gives us a nice history of everything that we shot with, as well as all the files that we took throughout the night. You can see all the ones saved here. This is about 30 frames that I took. And if we were to go back to panel two, we can see that it's saved in the exact same method. It's going to give us our acquisition details, our metadata, and our weather data for all of the pictures that we took during that time. And like I said, if I was to have flats, darks, biases, and dark flats, those would all go right here. And actually they would go where these three are right here, and these three would be shifted over. And if we were to have it in a list view, we would go to details like this, at the very top, you would see bias and flats and darks. And the reason why is because if we go to create a new folder and we do exclamation point dark like that, because we put an exclamation point that supersedes all of the things here and will always show up at the top no matter what. So if you were shooting something, like let's say you're shooting um, a Caldwell or a Barnard like let's say you were shooting Barnard 38 or Caldwell 38 or something like that, those would probably go above this normally because B and C are before D. But since we put an exclamation point, this ASCII character actually shows up before A, B, and C. So that makes these ones always show up at the very top. And also the reason why we picked exclamation point specifically is because this does not hide folders on Linux or on Mac. I tried out using dot dark, and that ended up screwing things up for people on Linux and Mac. So we swapped it over to an exclamation point and we haven't had any issues. So I wanted to quickly go over what the storage looks like on my NAS because this has all of the libraries that have been taking throughout the years. So if we were to pull up my Edge 8, as you can see here, right below that, we have my 294 MC and MM. If we pull up my MM, you can really see why this file tree system is so good. Here we have my bias, darks, flats, as well as live stacks. That shows up down here as well. And then everything below that is all of the targets that we've shot. And if we wanted to go and sort with any of this data here, it's very easy for me to go and pull out flats, darks, biases, and dark flats for every single corresponding night. As long as I have those frames and they were taken, it will be logically sorted in the folders easy for me to access. Let's look at IC1396 right here as a perfect example. If we open this one up, we have data acquired on 428 as well as 429. If we were to go back up here, we have our flat libraries, and we have flats acquired on 428 and 429. So we can open up both of these, and we have flats and dark flats here, and here we have flats and dark flats here. So this takes care of our flats and our dark flats. If we want to get our darks, we go into here, 328, and we have our 900 second dark that corresponds to that because we took 900 second subs. And now we combine with this along with the flats and dark flats from 428, 429. And since these have also have keywords in them, Weighted batch preprocessing will be able to sort the 428 flats with the 428 lights and the 429 flats with the 429 lights, as well as the same thing for the dark flats. All right, I also wanted to go over some of the plugins that I'm using to track my telescope. The first one that I'm using is Lightbucket. This is the best service that there really is out there as far as third party goes. It uses your Discord account. I'm not going to explain the whole service but really it's a way that web session history viewer works but in a much longer format it's a really great plugin and i highly recommend using it just with your discord information the next one i'm using that i already showed off a little bit earlier is the session metadata just note that i have the plugin enabled i have weather metrics on and i have csv enabled if i wanted to add in some things here i could like date date minus 12 filter blah 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 but i don't think it's that necessary and i think for now i'm just going to leave it like it is finally i'm using my web session history viewer currently i have this set at 90 days but you can really change this to wherever you'd like 
I also have it to support non-lights because it's very useful in my opinion to be able to go back and look at everything that you've done. And this plugin is great because you can access it from any computer on your own network or if you've opened up a port to the web then you're able to access it that way. Just know what you're doing if you do it that way. I don't do it like that because I just know that it's easier for me to just only access it locally and I can use Lightbucket for everything else. One of the considerations that a lot of people are going to have is, well, I've been using a certain file saving system for a really long time. How do I safely switch over to this new one? Well, first thing I would do is change the folder that you're saving things to, to a new one. I switched from the documents folder over to my pictures, and that allowed me to start saving my pictures in a new location. And I didn't have to work, worry about changing my old stuff. Then once you started saving things in this new configuration and you're starting to get used to it, then you can start manually dragging things over by hand, or you can write a PowerShell script that can take care of everything for you automatically. I don't have the technical knowledge to do it myself, but I do have a friend who said he's going to work on something like that, and that would be the best way to do it, in my opinion. But overall, moving my data around, I had about a year's worth of data that I've been collecting, and it wasn't too hard for me to shuffle things around. It took me about two or three days and I had it all perfectly organized. And from there on out, I was using my new file saving system and it's been working flawlessly and I can really find my data now. It's easy for me to sort through things, to find the right calibration frames and just to run it all through my processing software. So if this video helped you out, please leave a like, please leave a comment and please do subscribe. It helps grow the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.